Hello and welcome to the fourth round of the Mercedes AMG Motorsport e-racing competition. My name is Robert Wiesenmüller and what you're seeing here today is a competition of the 17 fastest virtual racing drivers on Race Room Racing Experience, the racing simulation for PC, who are taking on one Mercedes-Benz gentleman driver. And it's not only a gentleman driver, it's someone who has got a lot of experience in real motorsports. It's Maximilian Götz, former champion of the ADAC GT Masters, who was a former DTM driver as well, who's racing here against the virtual drivers. So yeah, what's the Mercedes AMG Motorsport e-racing competition? The competition for the virtual drivers that goes over nine rounds following the real DTM schedule. We can take a look at the calendar here. So we're currently at the fourth round at the Norris Ring. We already had races at Hockenheim, Laudus Ring, Hungar Ring. And uh, yeah, after this race, there are also five online rounds coming up. These drivers here are participating online from their own computers from at home against Maximilian Götz, who is sitting um, at the Norris Ring, at the location in the hospitality of Mercedes. And um, yeah, it's certainly going to be really exciting. And um, if you watch maybe some of the previous races of the season, you will know some of the drivers that are competing here. And here we've got the current championship standings. Julian Kunze, the German driver from Euronix Gaming, is leading the championship on 54 points at the moment. Jack Keatley is in second place. Then it's the Austrian Kevin Siegel-Webernack in third place. And you wonder maybe what are these people actually racing for? Is it, just, is it just for the honor? Is it just for glory? No, it's not. Because the top six drivers of this competition, they will be invited to the final race of the DTM at the Hockenheim Ring, where they can compete against the entire DTM team of AMG Mercedes. And the top three drivers in this race, they will actually qualify for a driver coaching, for an experience in real Mercedes-Benz cars. For example, in the Mercedes AMG GTR. So let's go back to the racing action here. We're currently in the practice session here, and the guy who's leading at the moment—it's this guy here. It's Tim Heinemann. Tim Heinemann, the winner of this competition last year when it was only one race, currently first in the practice session here at the Norris Ring. In second place, we've got Ben Spanky, who's a new driver who hasn't participated in any of the rounds before. Oh, little glitch there. Let's jump to Moritz Löhner, who's got the home race here at the Norris Ring. He lives very close to the track. He actually wants to go to the DTM race after this race here. And maybe some of you guys have tuned in earlier today and wondered why I'll be streaming again here, what has happened. We had a small server issue in the first race. Um, so we're here back for a second race at the Norris Ring, as we see a nice little drift by Moritz Löhner there. So, 11 seconds left in the practice session. What is coming up next? We've got a 10-minute qualifying session, and then we've got a 20-minute race. That's it. 20 minutes for these drivers that they have to perform, and it's points for the top 10. Practice session over now. We can see Jaroslav Honzik, and now we can see the cars lining up in the pit lane. And now the 10-minute qualifying session has started, and the drivers are getting ready to get out of the pit lane. Watch this queue of cars screaming out of the pit lane here. No one's wasting any time because it's only 10 minutes, of course. We all want to be as fast as possible on the track. Having a look here at this guy, Jack Keithley. He was leading the first race here at the Norris Ring when the technical issues occurred. And he also won the last two races. He won the race at the Hungar Ring in completely dominant fashion. And then he also won the race at Laudus Ring before, but that was a bit controversial because he was involved in an incident with Kevin Siegel Revanak. He actually got a penalty for it, and that's why he's not leading the championship, but instead Julian Kunze is leading the championship. Now that the qualifying session is on, Let's actually have a look here with Jack Keatley and let's go on board for one lap with him. Driving in the number 20 car, Gary Paffett usually drives this livery in DTM. Heartbreaking here for the first corner, for the Grundig Kehre. Accelerating out, you have to stay really close to the walls, but better don't touch them, because you might pick up some damage here. Now coming up the Schöller S, heartbreaking once again, and it's a chicane where it's very easy to clip one of the barriers there on the inside if you try to carry the maximum speed through the corner. 
over the pavement on the right on the exit and now coming up to the final corner. Hard braking once again. This track is very demanding for the brakes and you can also probably see it in the steering wheel a little bit that it's quite bumpy here. So Keith Lee accelerating out. Let's see what this first time will be. Heinemann on provisional pole. You can see it on the top left. But where will Keith Lee come out? He's first. Provisional pole 47.475 for Jack Keith Lee. Florian Hasse currently in the second position and he just got dropped down by Daniel Schirn. And now it's Matthew Williams, so it's one driver after another crossing the line here and setting faster times. And currently the two Brits in the lead, but as I say that, Kevin Sigurevanak takes the second position. You'll see a lot of lead changes here. It's certainly possible to do a 47.2 in the qualifying session. This is what we will expect, the pole time. Have a look here with Maximilian Götz. Now you can also see him behind the wheel. He's sitting at the Norris Ring in the Mercedes Hospitality, but he had very limited practice before this event, so we can't expect too much of him here. Laid on the brakes, and there you can see it. It's not so easy. I mean, these cars, they come really close to the real DTM cars in terms of physics. There's a lot of effort that put in to make them as realistic as possible, but still, when you're a real driver and when you're competing against these virtual drivers that have practiced for hours and for days to be a part of this competition, then you will have a tough time. Take a look back here because we've got a new pole sitter, a new provisional pole sitter. That's Tim Heinemann and two purple sectors once again and a nice little strip, slipstream there of the silver file car ahead of him. So maybe an improvement for the number 46. Forty-seven point three six five is what the time says right now. So that's a nice time, but it, I'm not sure if this will actually be the pole position at the end of this session. Still good performance from Heinemann, and there we go, Jack Keithley, one of the big favorites here, takes the provisional pole position away from Heinemann and moves up into first place. Kunze in third, Williams in fourth, Daniel Schön in fifth, and Florian Hassel currently in the sixth position. Got a very international field here, full grid, 18 cars on the, on the server here right now. Little tap of the wall there by Florian Hassel. When this seems like they're almost racing each other already in the qualifying session. Spectacular scenes here. Let's go on board with Matthew Williams, maybe, and see, uh, yeah, see the track. He's in the TV Spielfilm livery, the one that's um, also driven by Julian Kunze in this race. Julian Kunze with the number three, Matthew Williams with the number 33. Coming up to the start from the straight here, this lap probably won't be an improvement. You can see other drivers improving. Mareus, for example, the Portuguese driver moves up into ninth place. Williams in fourth. Kunze now in third place. The championship leader, Julian Kunze. You can see the car moving there. It's really, really bumpy on, this, uh, on the circuit. You have a lot of surface changes here. Here you can see another surface change. And I mean, that's true because it's not, uh, you know, not a dedicated racing circuit. These are real roads in Nuremberg in Germany that are just used as a racing track for this event. Julian Kunze running right up to the wall. This is trying to get him the best run for the next lap here. Let's see if he can improve. There's only 4 minutes and 54 seconds left in the qualifying session. And unlike in, in the real DTM, where you can still finish your lap after you've crossed the line, here it will be like this, that if the time runs out, the qualifying session is immediately over. So these drivers really have now 4 minutes and 35 seconds to improve their time. And Julian Kunze, he's doing exactly that purple first sector. Let's see what the second sector will say. Also purple. This is an amazing lap by Julian Kunz and he might get a little bit of slipstream here. Let's see how he makes oh, the final corner. Oh, oversteer moment here. This will cost him some time. Let's see. He's, yeah, I don't think. I don't think this would be pole position, but let's see what the time will say when he crosses the line. And it's third place. Third place for Julian Kunz. A nice lap, but not quite enough. Times are extremely close. The guy in 17th position, that's the Turkish driver here, Emre Cihan. And he's only less than half a second behind the pole time. So this just shows how close it really is. Moritz Lerner, meanwhile, has moved up into fourth position. The driver from Nuremberg, or from the area around Nuremberg here at his home race. Good performance from him. Oh, and there's a spin. Ah, and that's a very bad place to spin as well. And you can see he immediately goes back to the pit lane because knows that he won't get a good run for the next lap. 
taking out of the pits and just moving out of the way here of the other cars that are approaching. The learner in the Mercedes Me car with the number 66. In the same car we've got this guy here but with the number 6, that's Alexander Dorneden. We had a pretty tough season, he's currently in 7th place in the championship standings. But we've missed one guy moving up the grid and that's Kevin Sigilevanak, the Austrian driver in the BWT car with the number 21. Very strong competitor in this championship and he's up to 3rd place. Three minutes left in the qualifying session and the big question is can anyone stop Jack Keefley here? Wins in both of the last races. He's been criticized quite a bit in the uh, in the second round of the season when he made contact with Siggy for the win. But now he's you know really found the sweet spot of this car. Really has a good setup and he's been the man who's been setting the pace for you know for several of the past rounds. Little side-by-side -side action there and so on. Number zero two, that's Maximilian Götz, and he's racing with one of the dark grey cars in the qualifying session already, but Keithley is on two purple sectors. Unfortunately, this would have cost him a little bit of time here. Been stuck behind the battle. Maybe he can improve with the draft, but I don't think so. No, it's not an improvement, but he still stays in pole position, of course. The words we have. Here we've got Nick Madsen, the Danish driver, ninth position. He was one of the guys who really missed out on the restart of this event, because in the first race he was running in a very, very good position on the podium. He's sitting on four points right now in the championship standings. Not a lot compared to the 54 points that the championship leader Julian Kunzer has. But he still has all the chances to qualify for the top six. And if you want to qualify as well for this final event, you can still join the running competition. You can still go to Race Room, just download Race Room on Steam and participate in this competition for free. Yes, it's entirely free. Of course, now it will be quite tricky to qualify because some of the races are already run, so you need to catch up a little bit. But, I mean, you can always try. And Nick Madsen, he's trying as well, moving up to 7th place. Go a little bit further down the order. No, let's go back up to 2nd place, because Kevin Sigi Rebanak moved up to 2nd place. So we've got Keithley and Rebanak once again in the front row next to each other. And that's the rivalry that's been going on the whole season. Rebanak was not happy with Keithley's driving style at all after the second race of the Lauritz ring. And I think he wants to do everything to defeat here on track, but not if he clips the wall like he just did. So that's not going to be an improvement. Here we've got Jaroslav Honzik, the Czech driver. What are you doing, guys? Racing a little bit too hard here in the qualifying session already. The Honzik stuck in the wall there. Another car has to wait. Yeah, not the best session for him here. If he the leading from the Flavernack and Dornin. He's up on a personal best. You can see the green middle sector. Only P11 for him at the moment. But I'm pretty sure he can do a little bit better. Not on this lap though, and this was his final attempt. Let's see if anyone is still out on track to improve. Nick Madsen is out on track, but he's not on the purple sector, not even on the green sector. So this will probably not be an improvement for him. Time's almost run out. And Ah, he won't cross the line, but I don't think it would have been an improvement anyway for him. So we've got the grid here. Jack Keithley on pole position, followed by Kevin Sigi Rebanak. Heinemann third, then Kunze, Löhner, Williams, Matzen in seventh, Daniel Schön eighth, Hassel ninth, and Miguel Mireyes in tenth place. So now it's a 50 second grid period where the drivers, or it's a 60 second grid period, I should say, where the drivers can load their race setup can do the last tweaks, the last changes for the race goes live here. We've got 20 minutes coming up and here you can see the car spawning on the grid. You can see in the background, in the right, that's Maximilian Götz with the number 02. Number 66 at the front, that should be Moritz Löhner. All the drivers now coming to the grid. And hopefully we are in for a really exciting race here at the Norris Ring. The engine's revving now. Lights should be on. Keithley on the left. Siggy on the right side. And we are away. And that's a good start from Kevin Siggy Revanak. Oh, and Keithley defends and Keithley squeezes him. 
by almost into the wall. That was very, very, very tough defending. And now they're streaming into the first corner. Heinemann on the outside. Oh, Kunz is having a look on the inside. Bit of contact there, but I think it stays more or less disciplined, I should say. And Kiefli is leading the race. But Heinemann and Siggy are next to each other already. And who's come out on top? It's Heinemann. Heinemann into second place. You can see the cars coming out of the corner. Maximilian Götz up to 15th place, but I think we saw him there in the background having a little oversteer moment out of the corner. Hard overtaking moves here. Moritz Löhner up into fourth position, just went past Julian Kunze. Let's see as they cross the line for the first time. Jack Kiefli, that's the view of his rear view mirror. He's leading the race in front of Heinemann and Rehvanak. Löhner in fourth place, then Kunze and Madsen with a good start. Williams down to seventh, Daniel Schön, Dorn Eden and Florian Hasse. Oh, late on the brakes from Heinemann there and Kunze in the background is trying to take the position back from Moritz Löhner side by side and Madsen is trying to cut the slice here. Madsen in the car that's silver on one side, black on the other side. But he's on the outside for the Schöller S. Can he hold on to the position? Now he's got the inside of course. Oh, a bit of contact, he tipped the wall there and he sends Kunze into a slide. Ooh, that was very, very dangerous and good driving from Kunze there to recover and he only lost two positions as a result to Löhner and to Madsen, but that's of course not a good way to take a position here by Nick Madsen. And Kunze is fighting immediately back, Löhner's running a little bit wide and this could be an opportunity. That's what from Madsen here. Kunze already right behind him again and Kunze, he will waste no time coming up here on the start finish straight. In one way, then the other. Now we're going to the outside. It's very tough to make an overtake around the outside. Oh, a steer by Kunze. And one of the cars is off. That's Heinemann. Heinemann had a spin. What happened to Heinemann there? Heinemann dropped back into sixth position. And we didn't see what happened to him there. But lots of trouble for Tim Heinemann. Lots of trouble for the winner of the first race. A bit of contact here once again. Not sure what happened there to Tim Heinemann, but he's dropped way down the order now, only in sixth position for the driver with the number 46 in the car that Eduardo Mortara drives in the BTM. We couldn't quite see, but what we can see now is that Jack Keithley has gapped Kevin Siggy Rivenack already. So maybe there was a bit of contact between Heinemann and Rivenack, but this, just, this is just speculation at this moment. Fights here. Kunze against Madsen. This isn't over yet. And from our helicopter camera here, Kunze still trying to put Madsen under a lot of pressure. But Madsen, he just charged through the field. He started in seventh place, remember. And now he did a really, really aggressive race. Oversteer from Kunze once again. He probably picked a really aggressive setup with low wing here. That helps him on the straights, but it doesn't help him in the corners. And you can see in the background Heinemann once again moving up the order, getting past the. through the final corner and now over the start finish line. Keithley with a nice gap already ahead of Sigi Rivana. Then Madsen and then it's a big group here. Tim Heinemann in fifth position but Lerner's all over the back of him and in front of him Kunze and Madsen have been fighting the whole race and Heinemann taps Kunze. Oh that was a big mistake there from Heinemann on the brakes and it cost Kunze another two positions and Heinemann drops also way down the order now into eighth position. Now he has to defend against Honsik, who's in the same livery as him, but with the number 22. Clipping the wall once again. Lots of trouble for Tim Heinemann in this race. It's probably not his best performance of the season, and now he's under huge pressure by Williams as well with the number 33 in the background. Heinemann once again sliding under the brakes. This time he made the corner stick, though. But yeah, he's having a lot of trouble. Let's take a look at the front of the field. Jack Keithley still leading this race, and it looks like a dominant performance once again from the British driver. Gapping Kevin Siegel-Rebanak here is already over two seconds the gap at the moment. Let's go back a little bit because there's a battle going on between Kadirov Stas, the Italian driver who's new in the series. It's his first race. He's just been passed by Alexander Dornin, the experienced German driver of the Impact Racing Team. Oh, big slide there from Kadirov Stas. Getting the car sideways here. It's very easy to do. Let's actually go back into the top 10 here because Kunze and Heinemann, this battle is not over. And these two, they are also not friends. I mean, in the e-racing scene, there's been a lot of races already in different formats. And these two, they've clashed quite a few times. 
And Heinemann here takes the position but outbreaks himself completely in the corner and has to let Prince of and probably also has to, move, has to let Williams through. This could be very, very close. Williams is moving over here, not to give Heinemann any extra room. Oh, but Heinemann fights back on the brakes. Heinemann very, very late on the brakes all the time here. Oh, and Kunze clips the wall again. Once again, oversteer moment of Julian Kunze here on the exit. He's still got a pretty decent exit, to be fair, probably because he held up the cars behind a little bit. And Heinemann's going for the move once again. Heinemann dives down the inside. Takes the position, but he loses the position instantly. Again, now he's got the DRS, now he's on the outside. And Kunz is back ahead over the line, but this should give Heinemann the DRS for the next lap. So a very interesting battle here forming up. You can see Heinemann on the DRS. Managed to make the position stick. Hits the curb hard, gets a tap from Kunze, and that's gonna cost Kunze another position. Loses the position to Matthew Williams, to the British driver here. And Kunze now immediately he has to defend from Honsik. So as soon as you get passed by one guy, it's like a it's like a swarm of bees that's coming up behind you and they will just attack you once again. Let's move up a little bit further on the grid. Florian Hassel, his best performance of the season here in fourth position. Great race from him. One of the drivers who's very experienced, but he's been struggling a little bit in this season, and now on the Norris wing, he seems to have found his pace, he seems to be doing a very, very good job here in fourth position, and maybe he can challenge Nick Knudsen, because in the qualifying session, if I remember correctly, Florian Hasse was ahead of Nick Knudsen. Looking back at Knudsen, Maximilian Götz, he probably had some issues in this race, because he's currently in 18th and last position, and talking of issues, there's Alexander Dornin, who's been stuck a little bit in the wall there, Lost a few positions and it's not a great race for him. You can see the smoke coming up in the foreground here. Dorn even fights back against Yakubu, against another British driver there in the silver fire car. Dorn even back into 13th place. We're not even at the halfway mark of this race. So, yeah, lots of action. And there's a car around. There's a car around and trying to find out who that was. I think it might have been Maximilian Gertz, who probably has some technical issues here, because he's just been lapped by the field. Actually, see what's going on in his race. And he's still driving. He doesn't look so happy. He's very concentrated at the moment. And he can't be happy with that performance here in this race. Apologies for that issue here and we're back in the race. Let's have a look at Florian Hassel because he's now under lots of pressure by Moritz Lerner. Moritz Lerner has closed this gap. I mean if we remember a few laps ago I mean Hassel was all over the back of Nutzen and we couldn't really see Lerner but good lines here from Lerner. The home experience shows for the young German driver and maybe he has a chance of, at uh, scoring a podium here in this race. It's certainly a possibility. Heatley probably, you know, has kept the field a little bit and we have to look back at Heinemann because he's made another move. Heinemann passed Williams now. Once again in the first corner, Heinemann always really late on the brakes here. Very courageous driver and oh, Kunze! What is he doing? Oversteer once again. Oh, now he's really slow out of the corner. The championship leader, this is going from bad to worse for Julian Kunze and he's having this uncontrollable oversteer all the time in the Schöller S and I don't know, maybe he picked up damage when he was fighting with uh, Heinemann earlier as he gets tapped around here by, I think this was Alexander Dorneden, so terrible race for Julian Kunze, he's down in 13th position now. Oh man, this is a, a lot of drama here happening for Julian Kunze, for the championship leader and this will shake the championship up once, championship up once again because Jack Keefley, his biggest championship rival, is leading the championship. And there's been a change for third position as well. Florian Hasse has now passed Nick Madsen and is now in the third position. But Moritz Löhner, look at him. Let's go on board with him in the cockpit. He's right behind them. He smells the podium here, that's for sure. But on the brakes, once again, in the Dutzenteich Kehre, the final corner of the track. Over steer on the exit and now DRS. Löhner's probably not close enough, but Madsen is close enough. Let's see Nick Madsen here. Closing the gap on Florian Hasse, but Florian Hasse himself has got a really, really, really good run out of the corner. So it's probably not enough to make the overtaking attempt here on the brakes. Bit of oversteer once again, the car sliding a lot. A lot of drivers went for a really extreme setup here. And this is showing it's not always the greatest idea. 
go for an extreme setup in the race. Of course in qualifying session it can pay off for you, but in the race you want some stability as well. Not the best set of corners here from Madsen, he lost a little bit of ground to Florian Hasse ahead of him. What's going to happen? Moritz Löhner, of course, with a very strong performance. I wouldn't put it past him if he makes it move because he's proven in the whole season so far that he's very good on his tire wear as well. Now, Moritz thing isn't really the most demanding track for the tires, it's more demanding track for the brakes and for suspension. The, always, it's the late race where Löhner is strongest. He makes a little bit of contact with Matzen here. Nothing that happened. Both pretty good recovery here for both drivers. Though it remains to be seen if Löhner can make a move. He's certainly looking here. little bit of uh, pavement here once again on the exit. This really unsettles your car. Not so easy to drive over that. And Hudson is having a look. Unfortunately, Maximilian Gerst out of the race now. Just received the information that he is out of the race. So no more improvements for the gentleman driver in this race. But Matson's looking around the outside. Oh, this could be an amazing move if he can pull it off. And he's getting a really, he's getting a really, really good run here. So maybe he can make the stick on the inside of the shutter as now. See, there's nothing that Hasse can do to defend here. And Matson back onto the podium. Very, very nice move. Lined it up around the outside. And now Lerner is having a look as well against Hasse. Look here for Moritz Lerner. The final corner. You can see always a lot of different lines here. Matson runs a little bit wider. Lerner with the oversteer once again on the exit, and that of course costs him the run for the next corner. You have to go back a little bit. Ben Spunky, the Slovakian driver, has moved up into eighth position, and that's also a nice group here. Fighting at the moment with Matthew Williams in the TV Spielfilm car behind him, number 33. And the number 22 ahead of him, that's Jaroslav Honsik, the Czech driver. Breaks by Bunky, who's having his first appearance here in this series and he's running in a very, very decent eighth position at the moment. Yakubu dropping down the order at the back of the field. Oh, he's coming out of the pit lane, or is it into the pit lane? I can't see. Maybe he picked up a drive through penalty here for some infringement, or maybe he just picked up some damage that he needs to repair. I'm not sure what's happening here to Yakubu, but that's probably all chances gone for him in this race. Having a look at this guy here, Jack Keithley. Dominant performance from him in this race. Yeah, we haven't really talked too much about him, but he's just driven a flawless race, start to finish here. Well, it's not the finish yet, of course, but um, it certainly looks like the gap to Sigiri is staying quite stable at the moment. Yeah, same can be said about him and Sigiri the Austrian driver. Very, very convincing performance, a very solid performance, and he will pick up a lot of points in the championship. He's currently in the third position in the championship. So he needs these points if he wants to win the championship. And also he needs these points if he wants to secure his place in the final six. Certainly looks like the race has calmed down a little bit. It hasn't calmed down so much for Ben Spunky here. Because he's still fighting with Honsi for the seventh position. It's an interesting fight because Honsik is also one of the drivers who scored a few points already but he's not currently in the top six so he needs some extra points to make the final, get invited to the DTM race and then compete against the entire DTM team of Mercedes-Benz. Let's see if he can hold on to his seventh position but Bunky putting in a lot of pressure and also Williams who had a stronger qualifying than both of these drivers but who had some issues already in the race. I think he was involved in the incidents with Kunz and Heinemann earlier on, dropped back a little bit and now he's trying to recover. But unlike Lerner, Williams is not one of these drivers who's known for his great tire wear so he often struggles a little bit at the end of the races. Bunky around the outside in the final corner, this opens the door for Williams though. Let's see if Williams with the DRS maybe can do something here, but of course Bunky also on the DRS. Actually see this back from Jaroslav Honsik, you can see the C63 getting bigger and bigger, and there's another one. Ooh, hard braking zone here, Bunky on the outside, sliding a little bit, and they come out the same order as they went into the corner. Very nice driving, very clean and fair driving here from all of the people involved in this battle. 
Yeah, unfortunately the same cannot be said about some of the earlier battles, but this one here, this is racing at its best. Of course, it's virtual racing, it's race room, racing experience, the racing simulator for PC, but yeah, I mean, on track it's always the same. It's driver against driver, against driver in this case here. Three-way fight, even though Honsik is kind of gapping them now on this lap. Yeah, and that's what we like to see, fair sportsmanship here from all drivers in the battle. Dawn Eden, meanwhile, has moved up into 10th position. So, there you can see him with the number 6. That's the last points paying position. 1 point for P10, 25 points on the other hand, though, for P1, for Jack Keefe at the moment. Dawn Eden here, ahead of Menelius and Stars. And we jump a little bit forward here, because there's still this battle here, the battle for the final place on the podium. Just as I say, there's, there's been a change of positions. Williams has gone past Bunky finally now. That must have been in the shadow as Williams moving back up to 8th position, has his eyes set now on Jaroslav Honsik. But let's go back to the fight for 4th position now. Hustle dropping a little bit back compared to Nick Madsen, but Moritz Lerner is still looking strong in the mirror here. Oh, strong breaks from Hasse here. Seems to be very, very good on the on straight and on the brakes, but he loses a little bit of time on the exit, maybe. So it'll be interesting to see Dawn Eden and Marais side by side for 10th position at the same time. And Marais on the outside. This move can work. We've seen it before. Dawn Eden is leaving him enough racing room, and that should be Marais back up into the point. Stars in the background in the pink car. Oh, and Dawn Eden fights back around the outside. Very nice move from Alexander Dawn Eden here. Back into 10th position, back into the points. And Stars now, he smells it, he smells the points as well. 12th position, let's see if he can do anything. Oh, late on the brakes! Ooh! He had to brake super hard there to make it stop. And let's see if he can take the position from Aurelius. No, he can't take the position. So Stars still in 12th position at the moment. Let's go back to Hasse here, who's in 4th position, because this battle is far from over. Hasse is chasing Nick Madsen at the moment. But behind him, Moritz Lunar still looking strong. Heinemann in 6th place, he had a lot of drama in the opening laps of this race, but it has kind of settled down a little bit. It's a driver who's a little bit infamous on the grid for, for driving very, very aggressively. And yeah, he's made a few, a few friends in this league, but also a few enemies, has to be said. Let's see what Hasse can do here though, because now he's got a really, really good run out of the final corner. He had the DRS and he's got good brakes. We've seen this already. Now he's on the inside in the first corner against Madsen. It's already ahead for the Apex. This should be the third position for Florian Hasse. No chance of a reply here for Nick Madsen. And the race is almost over as well. We've got one minute and 50 seconds left. Unlike the qualifying session, of course, the drivers here will get an additional lap and they will be able to finish that. So, it remains to be seen how many laps exactly we will see in this race. I think it should be no laps. We will see that once they move on. Of course, lap times here are extremely short on this track, so I might be wrong here. But Florian Hassel is certainly not wrong when it comes to setting up his car because he's running in third position. Dawn Eden back up into 10th. You can see here, late on the brake, Madsen, he's struggling a little bit here now. And a lot of pressure by Moritz Lerner. Taking a look from the rear wing of Nick Madsen here. Number 66, that's Moritz Lerner. Driving for Heusingfeld, Core Engineering. Of course, all these drivers, the virtual drivers, they've got their own racing teams. With which they practice, it helps them a little bit with setting up their cars. It's not quite as big as in real motorsports, of course, but it's certainly becoming a thing here in the Mercedes AMG e racing competition. And Matson, he has a lot of things to do. And Kitty has crossed the line before the 42 second mark, so this should not be the final lap. There should actually be two more laps now. Let's see Lerner looking on the inside. Can he do it under braking? Madsen late on the brakes, very late. He almost touches Hasse as well, but he keeps the position. So nice defending here from Nick Madsen. Oh, Stars, meanwhile, has gone past Marais for 11th position. This also isn't over yet, because they just come down to the first corner right now. Stars in the pink car, number 47 takes the position here for Marais, 11th position now. Back to Madsen here, because Madsen is now all over the back of Hasse. He's actually closed the gap now, clips the wall a little bit here. Now he should have the DRS, 
Let's see. Can Keithley cross the line? Oh, I'm not sure if Keithley crossed the line here in time. Oh, but I think he did. I think he did. So that was not another lap for Jack Keithley, but he is slowing down here. So it's Jack Keithley who actually wins the race at the Norris Ring. Great performance by the British driver here. So it was already... <laughs> I, th I thought so. I mean, it's a short lap and we couldn't tell exactly. So Jack Keithley now driving here. Winning this race ahead of Kevin Sigirimanak, of the Austrian driver, and Florian Hasse actually managed to hold on, and he did the fastest lap of the race. So Florian Hasse manages to clinch the third position, Nick Matson in fourth place, strong performance by him, ahead of Moritz Lewin at his home race. Then Tim Heinemann in sixth, Jaroslav Honsik in seventh position, Matthew Williams, Ben Spanky, and the final point goes to Alexander Dorni. So this was the racing action here but we've got something else coming up. We've got driver interviews coming up. So, um, yeah, you can, you can hear what the top three of this race have to say. So Jack Keefley, Kevin Sigi Rebanak, and Florian Hasse will join us shortly. Just waiting for the drivers to come back here in the pit lane waiting for them to park their cars and get ready for the interview. Let's see if someone's already there and we're still waiting for the drivers. Let's just recap the race a little bit while we're waiting here. So super strong performance by Jack Keefley once again, his third win of the season. Very, very solid performance by him. Hasn't been challenged at all in the race except for the start. And this could be a little bit controversial when he moved over to the left side and gave Sigi Remanak no room. And um, yeah, certainly there might be some discussions, but the race itself, it was a flawless performance by Jack Keefley. Second place, Kevin Sigi Rebanak, same can be said about him, really flawless performance. But the guy in third, Florian Hasse, he had a little bit more work to do in this race, as he was fighting for the whole race against Nick Matson, and then later on also against Moritz Löhner. Of course, we will be um, we will be have, having other races coming up here in the Mercedes AMG Motorsports e-racing competition. The next race is from Moscow, so that should be certainly interesting. Completely different track layout. It's one of these modern racing circuits with a lot of runoff areas. Completely different compared to the Norris Ring, where you just have walls. Clearly define the track limits. So let's see if the same drivers can be strong there. But one driver who has been very strong the whole season, and has been Jack Keithley. And he's going to join me in the interview right now. Hello, Jack. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Congratulations. It's your third win of the season. And once again, a very, very dominant performance. So how did your car feel here on the Norris Ring? Um, oh, to be honest, as predicted in practice, it felt good from the start, good in the middle. And then it's just a case of trying to not kill the right side tires too much in like the last five six minutes but yeah very good kevin kept me under pressure the whole race so i couldn't take it easy for one lap we had a you know we saw a little controversial moment at the start when you were moving over to the left side and we couldn't quite see if there was enough room for for siggy or if he was behind you or alongside you so maybe you can tell us a little bit about that I go off the line and my intention is always to block the inside because for some reason my starts are not great in these but as I went over to the left I saw in my mirror I saw his rear wing so I assumed he was directly behind me but then as I went to where I thought there was a gap it seemed like his front bumper was there or something but uh, we, we both lived. So, um, yeah, you certainly, after this race, after the performance of Julian Kunze here as well, who had a lot of trouble in this race, it looks like you've taken the lead in the championship. So how do you feel about your championship chances? I feel very good. I mean, top six is the main priority. But, of course, winning the championship, that would be absolutely outstanding. All right. So... Congratulations once again for your victory here, Jack. And I'm pretty sure we will see and hear you once again during the rest of the season. A very impressive performance from you. And see you next time. Thank you very much, Robert.
So that was Jack Keithley, and now we will have a word with the second place finisher. That's Kevin Siegel-Rebenach from Austria. Kevin, can you hear me? Yep. Kevin, <laughs> you sound so quiet here in the interview. Not enthusiastic about your second place? Um, I mean, I'm not so happy about it, and I killed uh, Tim in the race. But to be honest, before before race one, I was feeling pretty bad because my pace was was so bad as well, and I was slow every lap. So I'm kind of happy about my pace, but not my position because I took it from Tim, and I apologize for that. We didn't see this on the stream. We only saw that Tim Heinemann dropped down the order, but maybe you can explain to us what happened there. Yeah, he was kind of trying to uh, make a move on uh, Jack there uh, on turn one, and he sort of made a made a cutback. He went f around the outside and on the inside uh, through the cutback, and I basically underestimated the length of the car and I hit the rear of him, and then he half spun. All right. That's why he dropped down. But uh, yeah, fair play to you for admitting this and for apologizing. I'm I'm sure a lot of people will appreciate that, and Tim himself as well. Nonetheless, in the championship, you're looking like one of the main contenders now. Not the best race for Julian Kunze here, but a very strong race for Jack Keithley, of course. And it certainly looks like you three are kind of gapping everyone else a little bit in the points. Yeah, probably. I don't know about that yet, because, you know, you can have some bad races and good races like Kunze had like second positions like in four races in a row or three and now he gets a dnf so that may happen to me as well so so did happen to heinemann in um, race before this restart happened so yeah any, anything can happen but i'm pretty confident i'll be there in top two maybe fight for the championship as well if if i get the pace as jack Heathley has all right, well, congratulations anyway for your second place here, and we'll see you again in the remaining rounds of the season. Thank you. So, one final interview left, and that is Florian Hasse. Florian, can you hear me as well? Yes, Robert, I do. So, nice performance by you, and it's your first podium of the season here at the Norris Ring. Yeah, thanks. Um, it went fairly well, to be honest. Um, I was a bit frustrated about the first race, and um, the server problems, but in the end, it, it finished well, yes. So we could see a race-long battle between you and Nick Madsen, and then later on also uh, Moritz Löhner joined in. So how was the battle for you? Um, pretty di uh, difficult for me, because I was sure I wasn't um, able to get him out of DRS range if I would overtake him. So I tried to stick back and just wait for the last couple of minutes, and then I... Uh, get the maneuver done and hope that he isn't able to catch back. On the stream, I wasn't really sure if this is really going to be the last lap because Jack Keithley just crossed the crossed the line at such a time where you weren't sure if is he going to complete another lap or or not. Do you think with an extra lap you still could have kept your third position? No, I wasn't uh, sure either. Um, I, I hope he's um, slowing a bit down to, to to get this lap be the last lap. But at the end, I think it was one or two seconds. So I was really happy that he's not able to to become another chance to overtake me. All right, well, congratulations for your first podium, Florian, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more from you in the remaining rounds of the championship. Yeah, hopefully. Um, the summer's coming, and the other leagues are, are paused, and I think I'm going to, to train a bit more for this league, and hopefully I can come back here. All right, thanks, Florian. And that's it for the broadcast here. So, I hope you all enjoyed the race here at the Mercedes AMG, AMG Motorsport e racing competition. We saw a really exciting race. We saw Jack Keithley winning ahead of Kevin Siegel Rebanak and Florian Hasse. And like I said before, next time it's Moscow. And I hope you all tune in once again. If you want to drive as well, you can do so. You can just download Race Room Racing Experience on Steam and join this competition for free. You can qualify for the next race. For every race, there's a leaderboard qualifying. So every time you have to qualify again, maybe you can do it as well. Or maybe you can just enjoy the, driving the beautiful Mercedes C63. So that's it from me. My name is Robert Wiesenmüller. And I hope I will hear you and see you. And you will hear and see me next time. Bye-bye.